Welcome PCS members and friends to our today's Tuesday um, IBS PCS seminar. It is a great pleasure to have with us today uh, Dr. Jongmin Park uh, from KIAS. And I would like to invite our scientific host, uh, Sergey, to introduce our speaker. Please, Sergey. Yeah, thanks, Tien, and uh, welcome, everyone. So it's a pleasure to have today Dr. John Min Park with us. Uh, he, uh, let me tell you a few uh, uh, facts about him. Uh, he studied at the physics at the University of Seoul, uh, where he finished his uh, a bachelor in 2011, and then he stayed there, continued to stay there, uh, and did his PhD uh, under the uh, advisorship of Professor Jae Dong No, whom we all know very well. Uh, then, after 2019, he moved uh, to the uh, Korean Institute for Advanced Study, KIAS, in Seoul, uh, where he is uh, at present as a works as a research fellow and is hosted by Hyungyu Park, who is an expert in various aspects of statistical physics and beyond, I guess. So the research interests of Jongmin Park cover such uh, areas as stochastic thermodynamics, uh, quantum thermodynamics, but also thermodynamics in active matters. And uh, he is the author of at least 14 publications and uh, it's a pleasure to have him today with us to speak about uh, thermodynamics of quasi-probability distributions for open quantum harmonic oscillators. Uh, Jongmin, the floor is all yours, please. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, this uh, nice introduction and uh, giving me this opportunity to talk. Uh, and actually, uh, I will talk about uh, the thermodynamics for, uh, I mean, the thermodynamic relations for open quantum system. And actually, uh, I will show you uh, by using some specific technique uh, based on quasi-probability distribution uh, representation, uh, we can drive some uh, noble relations, thermodynamic relations for this open quantum system, especially for uh, quantum harmonic oscillators. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, let me uh, start with a very basic topic. Uh, actually, in thermodynamics, we have two universal laws, uh, and actually, so uh, it it shows that uh, if we observe a thermodynamic process. Uh, if uh, it doesn't obey those universal laws, that means that uh, that process is not allowed in nature. And so this law is very universal. So all, uh, I mean, yeah, all the systems should uh, obey these laws. At least uh, the system is uh, macroscopic. But if the system is uh, microscopic size, uh, for example, with a uh, small number of uh, degree of freedom, then uh, we can observe some process where the second law is violated. For example, uh, if we have a single particle confined in a uh, finite volume, and if we consider a process where the volume uh, is extended, then uh, by chance, this particle can uh, work against the wall. So it means, I mean, by absorbing some heat from the thermal reservoir, it means that yeah, we can observe some process where the thermodynamic, uh, uh, the second law, is uh, broken. So yeah, in this sense, so uh, people might ask that for microscopic systems then yeah, we don't have the thermodynamic second law, but, but that's not true. Actually, yeah, there is some yeah, research field uh, called stochastic thermodynamics, and, uh, yeah, which is uh, deals uh, with some uh, thermodynamics for uh, stochastic processes. Here, uh, in this field, yeah, we define the interproduction 
by this form and yeah it have has two terms one is some uh, one is enter production for the system which is defined by the Shannon entropy for uh, system distribution and the other term is uh, the enter production for the thermal reservoir so if we define the enter production for the uh, system then on average uh, this enter production always non-negative so this is our uh, the second law of thermodynamics for microscopic systems uh, Jongmin, uh, we have a question from Dominic. Yeah. Dominic, please. Uh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. I wonder in the second law, uh, obviously there is a, you like in Shannon entropy, so there's some observable that you are doing. And I think because you denote it x, it's a, it's a position observable, right? Imagine position of something. Yeah, so, so what is the question? Yeah, so I guess the question is, um, I mean, is that true that you are measuring position or that the Shannon entropy is in position? Uh, uh, actually, yeah, this is uh, the, it could be position or some other uh, phase of variables or state variables. So, uh, I mean, for the microscopic systems to describe the time version of the system, we need to, uh, I mean, we use the, I mean, the phase space distribution. Yeah, so so this channel entropy is the, I mean, yeah, for that phase space distribution. Is that the right answer? Mm, but I'm not sure if that's the right answer. Uh, well, if, if, uh, P is the probability of finding the state. I'm not sure. Are you doing quantum or classical physics? Ah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. This is about the classical system. Okay, so yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's so then, if if, if yeah, X let's is consider a point in some, space, then this, this quantity is uh, is constant in time, right? Because of uh, unless, unless you have open system, but Liouville equation says it's 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 constant in time in closed system. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, as time as the uh, system evolves in time, this distribution also yeah evolves under some uh, yeah dynamic rule. So, so uh, what variable is the x? Is it position? Yeah, it could be position or uh, also momentum or some kinds of yeah state variables. I mean the phase variables which is required to describe the system. So for example, if we have a Brownian motion, then yeah, then this is the position. So this is the distribution for the position. And so if uh, the particle start from some point, then in that case, the initial distribution could be delta function. And as time goes on, uh, this distribution get broader so this is the evolution of this di distribution. Then every time we can uh, calculate this uh, Shannon entropy for the system at time t. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. by by uh, then yeah we regard this term uh, this quantity as the uh, the system entropy at time t. So yeah, but you can principle choose pretty much any observable, right? Yeah, yeah, any, 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 any this, phase observable. This, is the system dynamics open or closed? Yeah, open. It's, it's open system. So yeah, it coupled to ah, a thermal okay. reservoir at temperature T. Yeah, so so yeah, this Brownian motion, yeah, continue due to the energy exchange with this thermal laser bar. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so there could be some non-zero entropy production. So in, in the stochastic thermodynamics, we uh, calculate that, I mean, we define the entropy production by using yeah this formula. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen this before. It's just that I, uh, um, 
usually in this approach, I, I like the justification for why choosing one particle observable and not the other. Oh, sorry. I think just I, people I compute things with position, but the why not pick something else? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't understand the question. Oh, is that uh, why choose position and not something else? Or you say it can be anything. But yes. what are we comp computing then if, if, if it can be anything? Because pretty much any quantity I define on, on phase space will increase. It doesn't need to be in an entropy. Right. So but it's, uh, it's okay. I shouldn't take too much time. It's your thought. So we can discuss oh. later. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, uh, if we uh, have a model to describe some uh, dynamics we have interest in, then yeah, to describe that model, yeah, we have yeah some well-defined set of uh, observ I mean variables, yeah. So yeah, by by using that the variables, we can yeah uh, build the distribution for the variables, yeah, and yeah. This we usually do. Yeah. So yeah, by by using this distribution, we can yeah calculate the uh, entropy, system entropy. Yeah. Then uh, the sum of the system entropy and the Clausius entropy for the thermal reservoir is always non-negative on average. That is, yeah, we call the stock uh, the second law for uh, stochastic systems in uh, I mean for classical systems. Yeah. So so yeah, in this sense, so on average we ha still have the second law for classical systems. Yeah, but for quantum systems, so uh, actually we also have a similar uh, relation, and where the uh, the system entropy is uh, replaced with the von Neumann entropy for the density operator describes the state of quantum system. Uh, and actually, this, this uh, the, I mean, stochastic, I mean, the second law for stochastic systems is or universal, it means that for, I mean, any stochastic process should satisfy this relation. But uh, this this term is, uh, I mean, this relation is the less universal. So it, I mean, it could be violated and yeah, it is uh, satisfied only for the system described by uh, quantum mass equation, yeah. Uh, Jongmin, uh, Dominic yeah. has a further question. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. I think it's actually related to my previous one. So this is actually not one-to-one -one comparison, right? Because in classical sense, you just said it can be any variable. And uh, but in quantum states, you take phonon entropy, and phonon entropy is a very specific uh, type of entropy that uh, uh, that's. Uh, corresponds not to the Chenot entropy that you describe, but, but to uh, Gibbs entropy, which is the Chenot entropy, but over when the X is a uh, phase space point. And that Chenot entropy will uh, be constant in time for isolated systems. So if you want to make such a comparison, I think you should uh, you should make comparison between quantum entropy and the uh, uh, and the Gibbs entropy, but not phono entropy as some assumption of entropy of some specific observable. Because phono entropy is basically uh, entropy of an observable uh, minimized over all observables. So that's, that's kind of a minimum of them all. Um, yeah, so I just don't think this is a fair comparison. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yes. Uh... As Dominic uh, mentioned, uh, actually, yeah, this is very, I can say, yeah, very specific uh, entropy. Yeah, but uh, what I want to tell you in this slide is uh, if we choose this uh, von Neumann entropy as the system entropy, then we can, uh, I mean, we can have 
a similar uh, relation. Yeah, this this uh, just what I'm going to say. Uh, only for the system described by quantum mass equation. Yeah, and some people yeah regard this relation as the second law for open quantum systems. Yeah, that's just what I want to say. Yeah, and also yeah we have to consider some other yeah yeah mental piece. Yeah, and also we can have many other yeah, similar relations. Uh, Jongmin, uh, we have yeah. another question from Dario. Okay. Yeah, uh, maybe it's related to what Dominic was asking. Maybe not, I'm not sure. I mean, here we are dealing with an open system, right? So, uh, I mean, and get confused why psi t, uh, I mean, the system evolved after some time is still in a pure state. I would expect that it will be a mixture, right? Instead, you are taking, uh, uh, you are assuming that the evolved state is still a pure state, right? Oh, no, no, no. This could be the missed state, yeah. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I consider some general, yeah, case. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then, uh, yeah, so, 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 yeah, in this situation, yeah, uh, people may ask that, Okay, let's consider that the system is at the steady state, then in the case, the system entry production vanishes. So yeah, so it means that these uh, two relations uh, become identical. Uh, sorry, there's this one and this one. So yeah, so in this case, it means that the classical system and quantum system uh, have the same concentrate so, and in other words, it means that uh, the quantum effects gives no contribution on the second law. Yeah, and so my, my question is, uh, is it true? Yeah, so uh, uh, is it really the quantum effects, uh, I mean, uh, nothing to do with the uh, thermodynamic second law? Or can, can, can we have another some uh, restricted bound or some modified relation? for a quantum system or not? Yeah, that is my first question. And the other uh, question is about the thermodynamic uh, uncertainty relation. And so actually, yeah, this, this is some kinds of uh, generalized second law, uh, which gives more uh, tighter bound on uh, entropy production recently derived in stochastic thermodynamics. So, so uh, this is relation is about non-equilibrium current. So, okay, uh, let's consider a system which is at the non-equilibrium steady state, then we can observe a non-vanishing uh, current such as work, heat, or entropy production, and so on, some particle current to work, yeah, the kinds of thing. Then, uh, especially for the overdent Langevin system, all kinds of uh, current can be uh, expressed by this form. So here, this lambda is an uh, arbitrary function uh, that is determined by the physical meaning of uh, the current we choose. For example, if we choose work as our current, then uh, this lambda becomes the external force. Then, then this phi means that the how the work again okay, I mean done by this external force yeah so and yeah so if we want to consider heat then yeah it could be some corresponding field yeah so so for any uh, non equilibrium current can be written by this form uh, we can also uh, have the distribution for this current then yeah we can compute the average and variance of uh, this distribution. And then the thermodynamic uncertainty relation uh, tells us that the entry production uh, has a non-zero law bound, which is determined by the this uh, average and the variance of this uh, non-equilibrium current. So, 
for for any non-equilibrium current, this uh, inequality holds. Mm. So in, in this sense, it is kind of universal. But uh, this is uh, certified only for the systems at the steady state. So it is less universal than the second law. But but the second law gives only uh, I mean only tells us that the law bound is just zero. But uh, this relation gives us non-zero bound. Yeah. So in this sense, it is more uh, informative. Yeah. And and there are uh, several uh, variants of the thermodynamic relate the, the thermodynamic uncertainty relation, also known as TUR. So yeah, this is the conventional one, and uh, the other relation is to uh, have, I mean, have this form. Yeah, so in this relation, the entropy reduction rate is bounded by the average of current rate uh, square divided by some uh, constant, which is, yeah, have this form. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so yeah, this relation uh, is, uh, I mean, course for only specific systems, but gives us some more uh, informative uh, yeah, relations. Yeah, so yeah, many people uh, have interest in this relation. So, and uh, John Min, uh, yeah. excuse me, uh, Dominic has uh, some question or comment. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. What, is, what is the capital lambda? Is that Oh yeah, yeah. capital lam one. lambda is an arbitrary function that determined by our choice of current. So for for example, we uh, want to consider work done by a specific force. Then yeah, in that case, we adopt this lambda as that force. Then yeah, then this phi becomes work. Oh, I see. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is and the arbitrary. upper index T that's transpose, or what does it, what does it represent? Upper index T, uh, where, oh, uh, yeah, transpose, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, this is transpose. So yeah. it's a matrix, or is it like uh Yeah, this is ve vector, yeah. So yeah, this is the uh, vector for phase of variables, and yeah, this is the arbitrary vector. Which and is and lamb lambda of... is a vector or a matrix? Yeah, lambda is vector. So this is, oh, a, so this is a So this is a scalar product of two vectors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, I see. OK. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, if you have a question, then yeah, please interrupt any time yeah, without any yeah, official dimension. Yeah, uh, yeah OK. So, so is it clear? Yeah, this is some uh, scala observable that is called. Uh, I mean, there is some some kinds of current type observable. Yeah. So, by using the statistics of this current type observable, we can uh, find a non-zero law bound for uh, entropy production. That's what the TUR tells us. Uh, but yeah, as I mentioned, uh, but this conventional TUR holds only for the systems at the steady state. So after it is derived, many people try to the uh, extension of this relation to other general uh, systems. Uh, and for example, in my recent works, I found some modified version of uh, this TUR for the systems with a magnetic field and the systems are uh, in the under them to resume. Yeah. And so uh, I also have interest in uh, the extension, some quantum extension of this TUR. So my uh, second question is that uh, then can we find some, some quantum version of this uh, relation? for the open content system. So that is the, my second question. So so my presentation, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, uh, Jungmin, uh, Dario has a question. Yeah, yeah please yeah, ask sorry. me anytime, yeah. 
Yeah, sorry, maybe I'm not uh, I'm not fully appreciating. Can you go back to the previous slide? This this slide. Uh, I don't I don't actually no. I think one yeah this one. Oh, so yeah. you I mean, if I understand this this thermodynamic uncertainty relations are you said are I'm getting confused are valid only for the steady state and only for some particular systems. Am I right? Oh, not particular system. Uh, uh, any any stochastic system with a steady state, uh, this relation holds. Okay, but so uh, I don't get. Uh, uh, okay, now go to the next slide. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. So I, yeah. don't, I don't get what you did. You what did you do here more than before? Uh, okay, I, I'm sorry. So any system is that. Uh, so use your uh, over them to Langevin system or uh, Mark, I mean Markov jump process. So, so when we say uh, it's a usual uh, over the empty system, then uh, we consider that that system contains no uh, time reversal broken symmetry. So, so yeah, so yeah, this relation is broken when we introduce some force, which uh, I mean, breaks the time reversal symmetry. So, so in this study, I showed that, so indeed, we, if we introduce the magnetic field and uh, magnetic Lorentz force that breaks the time reversal symmetry, then yeah, really, the, this uh, ah, GY right. is violated and modified by this, um, uh, this factor, yeah, lower than one. Yeah, okay. that's what I okay. did this okay. yeah, now, study. Okay. Yeah. Now oh, yeah. okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, you know, my second question is then how uh, quantum effects modify this uh, relation? Yeah. Or can we find some similar relation for quantum system? And this is uh, so, yeah, ongoing. Uh, I mean, I, I still yeah, study this part. Yeah, so I will briefly uh, introduce some uh, result. Uh, it, it, uh, yeah. And so uh, I divided my presentation into two parts. Of, so, and actually I spent most of time uh, dealing with this first part. Uh, actually in this part, yeah, I will show you, uh, I, mean, in, I mean, I focus on some specific uh, quantum engine system, and then I will show you uh, by using uh, quasi property distribution, we can find uh, some, uh, additional, uh, I mean, more strict uh, second law, yeah, modify second law, and which also gives us uh, some additional uh, efficiency bound on the engine. Yeah, and, and this part is based on my uh, previous work published in PRE. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, before uh, to, uh, I mean, people talk about the quasi probability distribution. Uh, let me talk about uh, usual and normal uh, probability distribution. Okay, so let's consider uh, some uh, observable of uh, operate, position operator. Then, if we uh, calculate the, its expectation value, then uh, on the basis of position, we can, yeah we have this expression, then yeah, it, it's nothing but the average of uh, this function over uh, this distribution. So yeah, so it can be regarded as some, uh, uh, some distribution for uh, position in, in quantum system. And also yeah, this, this quantity satisfies some conditions that uh, we, uh, I mean, conditions that the property distribution should satisfy. So, yeah, the first condition is normalization. So, yeah, and the second one is the pos positivity. Then, yeah, then the next question is, then can we have this uh, some uh, similar, I mean, quantum analog for, uh, phase space distribution. I mean, I mean, in a um, straightforward way, no, because 
uh, I mean, the position operator and moment operator are not commute. So, yeah, we don't have uh, the eigenstate, I mean, common eigenstate for the position and momentum. Yeah, so, so yeah, we cannot have, yeah, in this way, we cannot have this uh, quantum analog in this way. So, and the other problem is, so suppose that if we have some quantum analog, then, uh, then the average of uh, the product of X and P uh, is, I mean, in, indefinite because uh, they are not permute. So yeah, we should specify which product of X and P uh, is corresponding to this, uh, the product of C numbers, yeah. So, yeah, so, uh, actually by, by uh, specify one uh, ordering of, of this uh, operators, we can define some, some, yeah, quantum analog of distribution that is called quasi priority distribution. And one, one of well-known uh, distribution is beginner, a beginner uh, function that is uh, defined by this. So, so in this case, we, our, our choice of ordering is the symmetric ordering. Yeah, so yeah, you can, as you can see here. And, but uh, interestingly, uh, this Vigna function actually yeah, satisfies some uh, some conditions, uh, which uh, the uh, phase phase uh, distribution should have. One is normalization, and the other one is um, if we uh, integrate. I mean, integrate the the one phase space variable, then it becomes the probability distribution of the remaining variables. Yeah, that is, this is, yes, this is the good, uh, I mean, property, but unfortunately, yeah, this function do not satisfy the positivity. So it can take uh, negative values. So this is not the probability distribution. I mean, that, that, be, that uh, can be, cannot be regarded as a uh, probability distribution I mean, for the classical system. But anyway, yeah, by using this representation, we can describe the uh, dynamics of any quantum system because it contains uh, the same amount of information to the density operator, yeah. So for example, uh, if we consider a single, uh, quantum harmonic oscillator, which uh, is coupled to thermal reservoir at temperature T, and its uh, average number of quanta is N bar, then, the, and, and then yeah, in the weak coupling regime, uh, it, its time evolution is described by this quantum mastication in the Lindblad form. And then, yeah, so then by using the definition of Vigna function, yeah, we can find that the, the time evolution equation for this Vigna function. Then the interesting point is, this is the poker flank equation. I mean, describing the time evolution of Vigna function. So yeah, it means that actually, uh, yeah, there is some uh, corresponding uh, features classical system uh, corresponding to this focal plan application, which is, I mean, yeah, so for example, if we consider a two-dimensional uh, classical system confined in harmonic potential with some external force, which gives rotational motion, and it, this is coupled to some uh, modified uh, yeah, it's the coupled to thermal reservoir at modified temperature. Then, and then if we see the time evolution of uh, phase space 
uh, distribution, then that distribution, I mean, the, the time version of that distribution is described by the same focal Planck equation. So, so, in, so in this sense, uh, we can uh, describe the dynamics of the original quantum system uh, by using this uh, mapping uh, on, into the classical system. Yeah, this one, I mean, good property of yeah this beginner function. Yeah, so so in this case, yeah, yeah in this sense, so we can call it as um, a phase space distribution. Yes, for yeah, class. I mean, some quantum analog of phase space distribution. And but one interesting point is that, uh, I mean, under this transformation, uh, the I mean, in the classical description, this description, the temperature of the reservoir coupled to the system is modified. Yeah, so 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 in the fictitious classical uh, dynamics, the, the the temperature of reservoir is different from the original temperature. That's one interesting point. And the second interesting point is, so by uh, so by interpret this system as the classical system, we can calculate the uh, heat dissipation into the thermal reservoir that is denoted by Q tilde. And also we can compute the heat dissipation the, in the original quantum description that is uh, denoted by Q. Then if we take the average of them, then yeah, they are uh, the same. So, yeah, this is the second interesting point. So by combining this observation, yeah, we can conclude that. Uh, so if we uh, consider the, the entropy production for this uh, fictitious classical dynamics, then yeah, it gonna be have this form. So yeah, so this is some kinds of new type of entropy production. So here, the system entropy is not the von Neumann entropy, but the Shannon entropy of uh, Wigner function. And also the temperature of thermal reservoir is some kinds of different effective temperature. Yeah, so, so, so uh, in, the, in this PRI paper, the authors introduced this idea and then they want to show that uh, by using the method in stochastic thermodynamics, uh, they want to drive the second law for this entropy production. But the problem is that if we if you compute the average of this entropy production, then yeah, that turns out to be this form, have this form. So actually, in the classical I mean, system. This phase space distribution always takes a uh, positive value. So, so yeah, it is positive always. But for the beginner function, for the quantum case, yeah, it can be negative. So it means that yeah, the positivity is not guaranteed. So to avoid this issue, so, they- I have a question here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah please. Yes. What about the uh, cases when W is equal to zero? Because then the integral becomes indefinite, right? You are dividing by zero. Is that uh, okay in the integral? In in general case, if it, it becomes zero, then this uh, probability flux is also vanishes. So yeah. Oh, so I it's think, fine actually. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I think it's fine in usual case. Yeah. Oh, let's see. What about taking absolute value of the denominator? I mean, that uh, would solve the problem. This is a factor be... product of this property current plus. Yeah, but in the de denominator, meaning like taking absolute value of W. Uh, I mean, it would become positive uh, if, you, if you take that. But is uh, that yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, if you take absolute value here, then it yeah it is always 
positive, but it is different from this average. So it is some kinds of another quantity. And ah. so we need another interpretation for this quantity. Yeah, but if we apply the method in stochastic thermodynamics directly, then yeah, what we have is this, this one without absolute value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so in this case- But is that the problem? problem? It just means that the system may uh, decrease in entropy. I mean, maybe that's okay. Um, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, that's okay because this is not the true entropy production. Yeah, but what uh, they do, they want to do is to find some some modified version of a second law for the quantum systems. But in, in this way, yeah, we we have no choice. Okay, I got it. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah, so yeah, this example shows that uh, actually in a naive way, we cannot find the second law for uh, this, uh, the for the quantum system. So to avoid this issue, they assume that uh, the system is always at the, some specific uh, state called the Gaussian state. And it is also known that when the system uh, at the Gaussian state, this figure of function uh, always non-negative. So yeah, it sounds like a very uh, tight condition, uh, but it is known that when the system is described by quantum mastication, uh, if the initial state is the Gaussian state, then uh, during the time evolution, the system is always remains uh, at the Gaussian state. So their assumption is just that uh, it, it initially the system is at the Gaussian state. And then uh, this beginner function is always positive for any time. So by using, I mean, yeah, by uh, introducing this assumption, they show that, yeah, on this constraint, uh, yeah, this some some kinds of entropy production they called beginner entropy production always positive on average. But the uh, interesting is the temperature is effective temperature and that is always larger than the original temperature. So it gives uh, more uh, I mean tighter uh, inequality compared to the original uh, second law. Uh, drive it by using von Neumann entropy for the system. And extremely, if we uh, take the limit as uh, the temperature goes to zero, then, then the, this uh, conventional entropy production diverges. So it is meaningless, but uh, this vegan entropy production uh, gives us some uh, Non, I mean, some some finite number. So, so in this sense, yeah, it even gives us some uh, yeah, useful uh, information, even in this uh, extreme limit. Yeah. Jongmin, uh, Dario yeah. has uh, some comment or question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's related to what Dominic was asking before. I mean, uh, can I just let's say, accept uh, that uh, the entropy can be negative uh, in the quantum regime? I mean, why, or let's say, maybe you, you can you can convince, mm, or let's say, you, you can provide some intuition why also in the quantum regime I cannot have negative entropy. I mean, in principle, I could assume that maybe I have negative entropy in the quantum regime, and when I take, let's say, the classical limit, uh, this will be always positive or something like that. I mean, uh, do you do you do you understand my my question? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Then, okay, let's uh, forget about entropy and just we assume that there is some quantity that is always mm -hmm. positive. It means that if we have some thermodynamic process, then this quantity is a good criteria 
to decide whether this process is possible or not. Mm. Yeah. So we want to find some, some quantity or uh, relation. Yeah, something like, I mean, have, have this form. And, and then we call this one entropy. Yeah, so the, the, I mean, the definition of entropy is used in various ways. So and mm. in this presentation, I use the term entropy production in, in this sense. Yeah, I want to find some quantity that is always uh, positive or larger than some, some, some quantity, some, yeah, some value. Mm. Yeah. But so, I mean, the fact, because now I, okay, so I understand that when this quantity is positive, essentially you have, uh, let's say, a, a direction. You say I can go from A to B, but not from B to A. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that it's hard to find this quantity is probably just to do with the fact that uh, quantum dynamics is uh, unitary and so you can always invert. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, close, close system yeah, is, yeah governed by unitary evolution, but open ah, system. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay, got yeah, okay, got it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that was the point okay, that yeah. I was missing. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you for... We have also uh we have also a comment or question from Dominic. Yeah, so um I still don't understand why this in reproduction has to be positive. So first of all the in, for open system, there is no second thermodynamic law, right? I mean, fridge is an open system, and entropy of a fridge decreases with time. Um, simply because it's an open system, right? Because it's performing work. Uh, so uh, it, it doesn't make sense to me to say, well, if I put, a, if I put a, you know, some chicken into the fridge, then it must its temperature must go up, uh, and I, I require this. Uh, I require this for any open system because that's basically what you are saying here. The entropy production must be positive, but for open system, it's not true, right? It doesn't need to be positive exactly because they are open. Uh, but, but the, yeah, e even though the system is uh, the open system. We, our underlying assumption is that the total system involving the thermal reservoir is closed. So we- So yeah, this is the total entropy production. Yeah, this yeah. This is the so, total, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ah. I see. So for quantum systems, the total entropy production is negative. At least that is written like with this Wigner function, it's, uh, it's negative. Um, yeah, yeah. If we define yeah, this interpolation, yeah, then it could be negative. So this is not the good uh, quantity um, mm -hmm. in, to yeah, so, uh, so decide the goal with. So I see that the goal of Santos was to just strict, restrict the, their case. So they just define this thing that they define and find it to be positive. It seems very ad hoc to me. Well, uh, well I, if, I, if I understand correctly, you, you are taking different approach. You just want to find some quantity that if it is positive, then it says that uh, process A to B is allowed. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay, I, yeah, I like your yeah. approach better because I think that Santos like it seems like, as I said, very ad hoc, right? It's just for the sake of, uh, you know, fulfill this criterion. But the assumption seems kind of like Gaussian state assumption is very restrictive. It just says, well, my system is basically classical. Oh. oh. So it doesn't make much sense to me. Yeah, but actually now yeah. I'm confused again about your previous answer. You said that the dynamics is non-unitary, but now if this is the total system on the total system will be unitary. So I'm a bit, I'm, I'm getting back to my previous question. If we are talking about the full system, I know that the for open system, the dynamics is not unitary, but if you talk about the full system now the dynamic is unitary. So I, I still think that I'm, I'm a bit confused about the notion of non-reversible because- Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so for the quantum system, um, yeah, this is some 
some critical issue. But uh, when when we perform some uh, Markovian approximation to obtain the quantum mass equation, we do some some approximation. Uh -huh. For example, the system relaxes. I mean, the reservoir relaxes very fastly. I see. So so and so we also perform some recoupling uh, approximation where we assume that the total system mm. uh, density operator is always given by this product form. So I see. I, uh, yeah. So due to these approximations and so after yeah this thing uh, things the I mean the dynamic map is just some kinds of semi. Uh, Group. I see. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, okay. Yeah, so in this okay. sense, yeah, it becomes irreversible. I see. Okay, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Now, now I'm yeah. more convinced. So, thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, and and this irreversibility can be uh, characterized by the I I call it entropy production with uh, yeah this second law. Yeah. So this second law means that due to I mean, yeah, yeah. If the system is described by this uh, dynamical map uh, satisfying the property of semi-group, then yeah, there is some quantity that is always positive. That that quantity is this quantity. But my, my purpose is actually yeah, this this relation contains no uh, effect of quantum uh, nature. So I want to. Uh, drive some additional uh, relation which shows the effect of yeah I mean, if, yeah effect of quantum thing. Uh, Min, we have uh, another question from Tofik. Yeah. Uh, this is okay. more like a comment for Dario's question. So even in a classical system, in in a reversible process, entropy production should be exactly zero. It can't be negative. Right. So even if you, you have, let's say, a unitary, unitary process where it's, uh, it's reversible, then entropy production should be zero. Uh, but in the, in the classical system. Yeah, I mean, uh, Dario's question is about, you know, like um, if, it's, if it's totally reversible, then why can't entropy production be negative? Um, then I would say even in a classical system, if you have totally reversible process, then entropy total entropy production is zero. Oh yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so what I, what I understand is the question was actually in the uh quantum system, the closed system is always described by a unitary evolution, so always reversible. So in this sense, if we consider the total entry production, then it should be zero, yeah, like in the classical system. Yeah, but, uh, but my answer is, yeah, uh, due to some approximation, we lose the re reversibility of the, this, the total system. And that's why we can obtain this some kinds of into production like quantity or open quantum system. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, anyway, yeah. you, you said yeah. the reversibility is lost in total system? Yeah, yeah. For for open quantum system, I mean uh some I mean to describe this uh I mean evolution of open quantum system in a um, by the Markov, Markovian process, we have to assume some some assumptions, yeah, like recoupling or fast civilization of thermal reservoir, yeah, some kinds of things. So, but, yeah, but due I to the process. But it, 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 it only makes you lose the reversibility of the system, right? Not like system plus environment. Uh, the evolution yeah, of yeah, system yeah. plus environment is still unitary. Uh, okay, see. Actually, I uh, know. Uh, I mean, due to this approximation, yeah, the total the 
evolution of total system is not describe the unitary evolution anymore. Uh, okay, so when, when you say total system, it's system plus environment. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Um, okay, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure I agree, but I, I, I guess it's a minor point. We can just continue. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. We may discuss about yeah, this thing later. Uh, so, sorry, Jungmin, uh, we have another question or comment oh, yeah, of okay. Varinder. Okay, so I have just a comment. So, yeah, no, actually for total system, the evolution should be unitary. It is uh, non-unitary or uh, like uh, irreversible only for uh, open system. But if we are talking about the total system, it should be unitary, like system plus environment. That's what the, when we derive our master equation, when uh, first we take the total uh, unitary operator, then we take trace out of it and we trace out the degree of freedom of environment. So then it becomes irreversible. But for the total system, system plus environment, it is always unitary dynamics. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah, as you said, what we do to obtain the evolution of open yeah, quantum system is this one. So system and path and yeah, this is system. Yeah, so first we, like for ovulation, we take uh, total unitary uh, operator for the system plus environment. Then when yeah, we yeah, take right. this step, then it becomes irreversible at this, in this time. Uh, so yeah, right. why the total entropy can, I mean, I thought that then the total entropy production must be zero. Instead, no. Total uh, entropy. I mean, if everything is unitary, I will, since a sigma dot yes. W is, uh, is a quantity which refer to the total, I mean, system plus buff, I will say that sigma dot W should be always zero. Instead, no. Um, I mean, if the evolution is unitary, I will say that usually it is easy. zero, but actually there are different kinds of entropy. So I don't know much about this entropy like associated with Wigner function. Yeah. So I cannot comment on that. But uh, usually, like in total, uh, if you to, uh, talk about like von Man Neumann entropy of the total system, then it is zero. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. If, yeah, if we consider the total uh, von Neumann entropy for the system at best, yeah, they, yeah, they should be zero. Yeah. Because Maybe yeah, the total system is discovered, yeah. Okay. But uh, when we uh, obtain the quantum mass equation, yeah, we do some approximation called recoupling approximation, which is at any time we uh, consider that the system at best uh, density operator is at the product state. So yeah, it, it means that, so I mean, under this assumption, the evolution of total system is not described by the unitary evolution anymore. Because if we if if this system is described, I mean, evolves under the unitary evolution, then yeah, yeah there must be entanglement between the system mm. and best. Actually, but, this is just a common trick to derive the master equation because we are ignoring the just a small correlation between the system and environment. But yeah. this is just a trick to derive the master equation. So that's why we call it has like a very weak uh, effect. Environment has born approximation. So, but born approximation is approximation. It is not exact. So there is always some kind of correlation between the system and bath. But this assumption is to derive the master equation in the right mathematical form. Yeah, but maybe that is this assumption is what create uh, sigma dot w to be positive, to be let's say non-zero or not. This is I think this is the point that we are arguing. Is this a small approximation what create a sigma dot w to be to be non-zero? instead of zero, or they are two different things? Uh, I mean, I, actually, yeah, this assumption has nothing to do with uh, this. this uh, not related, or it is, sorry. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, what, what is the point of your question? I mean, the, is this assumption the reason why we expect the sigma dot w to be positive instead of uh, no, 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 zero no, no. or not? No, no, no. Uh, actually, this no. assumption is uh, needed to drive the 
occasional motion for open quantum system. Okay. Yeah, which but is... the fact that sigma dot w is non-zero has nothing to do with this assumption. Um, without this assumption, uh, we cannot find the explicit form of the equation motion for the system density operator. Mm. Yeah, so so all this scenario is uh, valid only for this specific uh, cases where the evolution of this reduced system operator is described by quantum mass equation. And yeah, okay. the quantum mass okay. equation derived on the, this assumption. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so so anyway, yeah, I, I believe that, yeah, due to this assumption, yeah, there is some, uh, I mean, irreversibility uh, is involved in open quantum system, yeah. When it described by quantum mass equation, but yeah, if I am I wrong, then yeah, please give me any uh, comments after yeah this presentation. But yeah, anyway, so but uh, yeah, so uh, anyway, yeah, we have yeah. So, so my my question is yeah, we have uh, I mean this relation is already known yeah. So it, and it has the similar form with the classical second law. Yeah, so some people uh, called it the second law for the open quantum system described by quantum mastication. But uh, by using this beginner function, uh, the authors find the another form of second law. And they claim that uh, it gives or, uh, I mean, it is the tighter inequality compared to the original one, but it is holds only uh, in specific case where the system is initially at the Gaussian state. That is the uh, point. So, uh, so inspired by that uh, uh, paper, uh, uh, in my previous book, I uh, considered some uh, quantum auto engine uh, consisting of quantum harmonic oscillator. So, so, so auto cycle consists of uh, four processes in the two, two, which is the two adiabatic uh, process and two isochoric process. So during the isochoric process, uh, we fix the frequency of the system. So. So during this system, the omega is not changed. And it can coupled to a uh, one of thermal reservoir. So it is change heat uh, between the, I mean, yeah, heat with the thermal reservoir. And then during the adiabatic process, it is detached from the thermal reservoir and we change the, the, this, the frequency of the harmonic oscillator. So, by doing this, uh, it can operate as a thermal engine. And then actually, yeah, this auto engine is widely uh, studied in many papers because it is, it is uh, analytically tractable. So, so indeed, you know, if you calculate the efficiency of this engine, then yeah, we can, you can find that yeah, this is always have this form and this is called uh, auto efficiency. Uh, so, so what I did in, in this paper is, so by using uh, the uh, Vigna function representation, uh, so I find that, yeah, this engine can be uh, also described by some, some fictitious classical engine. So, and then, uh, for this engine, if you calculate the vegan entropy production, then during the adiabatic process, yeah, the change of vegan entropy production is zero. And during the high school process, the vegan entropy production is given by this. So, 
So everything is ha have the same form with the classical system. So we can find that the efficiency is bounded by some coronal efficiency in terms of this effective temperature. So, uh, so you, this plus shows that yeah, uh, actually yes, uh, it plus this uh, some effective bound as a function of the energy scale ratio uh, of uh, some quantum energy scale to the classical energy scale. And here, this dashed line is the classical Carnot efficiency. And this dashed line is the true efficiency of this system. And then, yeah, so it shows that in the limit where the uh, thermal energy is dominant, our bound uh, becomes the Carnot efficiency, classical Carnot efficiency. But in the opposite limit, yeah, our bound uh, becomes, I mean, so, so yeah, in this case, the, the system uh, efficiency, uh, I mean, saturate to the our bound. But in any, uh, any cases, our bound is always tighter than the classical uh, current efficiency. So, so in this sense, uh, we can say that for the quantum engine, there is an additional uh, efficiency bound, which is tighter than the kernel efficiency, and which can be derived by using some uh, classical description on based on the uh, quasi probability description. Yeah, this the point. And also, I performed, I mean, repeated the similar uh, calculation by using the other uh, named cause priority distribution. So one, one is uh, so-called Q function and the other is P function. And the inter interesting point is, uh, I mean, if we uh, write down the time evolution equation for both uh, cause property, then they also have the similar, uh, I mean, they also describe uh, the similar focal plank equation with different effective temperature that is written by here. So, uh, and the other interesting is uh, actually Q function is always positive, but P function also can take the negative. Uh, and actually I forgot the, in the before, I mean, previous slide, but uh, actually in this engine, what we have found is at the, uh, the steady state, the cyclic steady state, this uh, the Vigna function is always positive. So, so if uh, the, uh, this engine is at the cyclic steady state, then at any time in this cycle, the Vigna function is always positive. I mean, the system is always at the Gaussian state. And also we found that, yeah, actually in general, this uh, P function can take a negative value, but for in, but uh, specifically for this system, this V function is always positive. So we can do the same thing for both functions. So by doing this, we find two additional bounds, which is for more coronal efficiency in terms of each effective temperatures. So yeah, it shows the result. So here, this dashed line is coronal efficiency. Then yeah, this uh, red, blue, and green curves uh, shows the, the bound uh, with, with respect to uh, Q and Vigna function and uh, P function respectively. Then yeah, it shows that there is, uh, I mean, order among this bound. So the bound with respect to P function is gives the loser bound and the bound of Q function gives us most tight bound, yeah. So yeah, this is the, uh, the main results in my previous work. So yeah, so it shows that, so due to the quantum effect, the quantum heat engine uh, is subject, subject to 
some additional efficiency bound. So it means that quantum nature suppress the performance of heat engine. Yeah, it, it may suppress the suppress the heat engine's performance. This one may result. And after this work, yeah, I performed uh, more analysis by using the most generalized form of probability this uh, quasi probability distribution. So yeah, so generalized quasi probability distribution have this form, and here is one uh, parameter s, which is the real number, and if uh, it is minus one, then yeah, this uh, generalized distribution becomes Q function, and if it's zero or one, then yeah, it becomes Fignon function or P function. So yeah, for this uh, generalized uh, quasi probability, I did the same calculation, and then I found that the effective temperature becomes this. And this is a decreasing function of uh, S, the parameter S. And also I found that yeah, this quasi-property distribution is always positive also when the uh, my engine system is at the steady state. So uh, I can find that the, yeah, for, for any uh, parameter, we can find this efficiency bound. And interestingly, this is the decreasing function of S. So, so it means that the, the most tightest bound is obtained when we take the limit as S goes to minus infinity. And then uh, it turns out to be the auto efficiency. So, so it means that in, uh, in the S, uh, goes to minus infinity limit, the efficiency, I mean, this uh, inequality uh, becomes equality. Yeah. So, so this plus shows that as we uh, decrease the parameter S, yeah, this bound approach the uh, real efficiency of the engine. So, yeah, so this is the uh, I mean, the main result in my uh, first part. So it's, yeah, it shows that you have infinite number of bounds for quantum system, and uh, which is uh, tighter than the current efficiency. And yeah, it's already 5.13. So yeah, so in the remaining part, uh, I uh, briefly introduced my recent work about the thermodynamic constellation for this quantum heat engine. Uh, actually, uh, by using uh, the standard method in stochastic thermodynamics, I can drive this relation for uh, heat from the hot reservoir. So, yeah, so this is, I mean, yeah, this is the, some quantum mechanical uh, TUR. So it, so it gives, I mean, in, in the Wigner distribution, the Wigner entropy production is always larger than some positive quantity, which is determined by heat, uh, average heat observed from hot temperature and some positive uh, constant calculated by, I mean, yeah, image by, yeah, this, Form. And then, yeah, by input this two identity to here, uh, I obtained this relation. This is called power efficiency trade-off relation. So, this relation shows us that the work uh, done to, uh, over the single cycle is vanish uh, vanishes when the efficiency of engine approach to this quantum mechanical bound. So actually, for the classical heat engine, we know that when the engine have corona efficiency, then the power vanishes because uh, the when the engine have corona efficiency, it means that the engine operates reversibly. So it means that every process is quasi-static. So yeah, so the 
operator time, I mean, the cyclic time goes to infinite. So, yeah, power vanishes. That's what we know. The I mean, that's the power efficiency trade off for classical microscopic engine. But, yeah, but in this uh, relation, actually, this some, how can I say, uh, this mathematical quantity. The some quantum mechanical bound uh, act as if uh, the current efficiency in the microscopic system. So this is some kinds of novel relation. So to check this uh, trade off, I calculated the work for this system, and then yeah, this lower panel shows the uh, work uh, in the uh, uh, quasi static limit. And it shows that when as the uh, efficiency uh, approach to the bound, the work vanishes. Yeah, so yeah. So this work have the trade off relation uh, with this quantum mechanical bound uh, with respect to uh, the Vigna function. So yeah, let me summarize my presentation. Uh, actually, in this presentation, I derived some uh, novel uh, thermodynamic relations for open quantum system of uh, harmonic oscillator by using quasi property presentation. And so the, my first result was uh, in the quantum heat engine, uh, this approach gives us more uh, tighter efficiency bound uh, than the kernel efficiency. And the second result was, it also gives us the power efficiency trade-off in terms of the quantum mechanical, I mean, additional efficiency bound. So yeah, we can find some more, uh, some, yeah, some quantum version of second law and the thermodynamic relation for this specific models. So the remaining question is, then uh, can we uh, find uh, this kinds of relation for any general systems I mean, beyond the harmonic potential? That is one question. And also actually in, in this system, I avoid the some uh, complicated issue, which is the the quasi probability can take the negative value, but uh, by considering this, this specific example, but if we allow that uh, region, then yeah, how how this relation is modified? Yeah, this is my uh, the other question. Yeah, and yeah, thank you for your attention. And this is my collaborators. Thank you, Jongmin, for uh, this interesting talk. Let us uh, thank uh, Jongmin. Uh, there were quite discussions during uh, the seminar, but we still have uh, time for a few uh, shorter questions. So please go ahead. Uh -huh, Tufik. Yes. Um, maybe you mentioned this at some point, but. Uh... Maybe I miss it. So uh, you were saying that the, the bound resulting from the Hisumi Q representation is the tightest bound, right? And um, usually a bound is useful when you know when the bound is saturated. So how can I saturate the, the, the Hisumi Q bound? Um, I don't know the what is the condition for the situation of this bound? But uh, so yeah, for the kernel efficiency, yeah, we know that if system is in the, uh, I mean, the engine is reversible, then yeah, the bound is saturated. But yeah, we don't know. But but unless we don't know the the condition where it is saturated, it can it could be still useful when we cannot uh, compute the I mean, explicit value of this efficiency. Yeah, then in the case, actually, yeah, this is written by known parameters. So yeah, we can say that in the case, yeah, we can, uh, I mean, conjecture the value of this uh, 
efficiency. Yeah, that's usually what bound did. So yeah. Okay. So then, it, okay. Um, because Hisumi Q is the tightest bound. Um, okay. Can can I just forget about the other bounds? Let's say, if for for this specific system. Mm -hmm. Like, is it possible for me to violate, let's say, Hisumi Q, but still satisfies the other bounds? Violate Hisumi Q. Like, yeah, but... violate the red line, for example, but still within the blue lines, like in between the red and blue. Uh, for general case, you mean? Uh, for this engine. For this engine, no. Uh, no. no yeah, yeah. Okay. Actually, yeah. This this bound bound is uh yeah holds any time for this engine system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And, and yeah, and this Fushimi Q bound is tightest among the uh the named bound, the W and P and Q. But if we extend our result for the generalized case. Then the most tightest bound is uh, this bound, where the s goes to minus infinity, obtained when uh, obtained s s goes to minus infinity. Yeah. So most tightest bound is yeah, this one. And yeah, and this is hold. I mean, yeah, for any any parameter s, yeah, this uh, relation holds for this specific system. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question or comment also from uh, Varinder. Okay, so my question is, so do you have specific mathematical form of these uh, Hushimi bound on efficiency or uh, Wigner bound? Do you have specific mathematical like closed form expressions for them? Closed form. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, uh, we, we know the closed form of this effective temperature. Okay, so. Yeah, so also we know this, the closed form of this effective temperature. So, so means by, they also depend on, on the frequency of the oscillator. So they like yeah, yeah, not yeah. efficiency is universal in the sense it depends only on a ratio of uh, reservoir temperatures. But these bounds are not as general as Carnot. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, actually, yeah. It, as you say, the Carnot efficiency only depends uh, on the quantity, nothing to do with the engine system. Okay. Yeah, yeah, only temperature. But yeah, it involves uh, the, the, I mean, the quantities uh, details yeah, model dependent yeah. bounds then okay. yeah, yeah 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 so uh, i don't know how it can be generalized for general quantum engines yeah okay. so that's that's one of my future work yeah and okay. yeah but yeah anyway this for this system yeah we can okay. and yeah, another question one. is you said that this we get always like a tighter bounds but in case of p functions we are even getting loser bound yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So it, so it's not depends on tighter. our. Yeah, yeah. So, so usually this is def depending on our choice of quasi probability distribution. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Uh, does it have to do anything with the averaging? Because uh, I can see Hushimi function is the smoothest function. Okay. So, no, yeah, smoothest function. Like, uh, and this is the most discrete one. Uh, this p function so it seems like p function is the you can say the loosest one since like if you take uh, average of p function you you will get uh, like wigner function okay so and if you take average of wigner function you will get uh, this uh, hushimi function so it seems like that from the ordering of the bounds that they have some kind of like uh, relationship with respect to the averaging effects uh what what is the averaging effect? Like uh, I mean to say, I'm not mm, I'm saying I'm suggesting that there is effect, but I'm asking for a connection because it looks like that you can write uh, Hushimi function as a you can say when you, you you take convolution average over Wigner function, and similarly you can uh, write Wigner function when you take some averages over, over phase space over this p function. 
Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand the point. Okay, okay, uh, okay. So maybe then there is no connection. It's okay. Okay, uh, I'm sorry about that, but anyway, yeah. Uh, in, in the research obtained from the generalized form, shows that the ordering is, uh, I mean, yeah, in, in this generalized form, yeah, it clearly shows that this uh, quantum mechanical bound is decreasing function of but, S. Yeah. But S equal to minus infinity, what is your quasi probability distribution function? Because usually when you take S equal to minus one, uh, zero or one something, you will always get Wigner function, Q function or Wigner uh, mm, function, Q P function, function. Yeah, yeah. or P function. But yeah, what yeah. is the corresponding like quasi probability distribution function for s equal to minus infinity yeah it's, yeah mathematically it is not very defined but anyway yeah actually mm -hmm. we know the closed form of this uh, generalized distribution so by putting some yeah. some large negative number yeah we can yeah. obtain this bound but usually because uh, s equal to minus one you can always get some kind of function from this uh, expression fs alpha comma alpha star but yeah, for yeah. s equal to minus infinity it seems like that there is no corresponding uh, uh, like quasi probability distribution function uh, or you can define this uh, integral using s equal to uh, infinity yeah yeah if, if it is goes to infinity or minus infinity yeah then it's mathematically yeah not ill-defined quantity but yeah we okay. can put any large number in here okay. and then okay. yeah there is a corresponding quasi probability but yeah yeah because it i mean although it has no name okay yeah, but and, you yeah. have something it is not ill-defined function yeah 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 for 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 any yeah, number large number of s and, but yeah. it will for any large number s it will become just zero oh no uh No, uh, one, because one, this two. it satisfy the uh, normalization condition. Okay. Yeah. So in that finish trivially, uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any uh, further questions or comments from the audience? seems not so in this case uh, let us thank Jongmin again thank you and with this we conclude our uh, today's uh, seminar